Hi, everybody. Welcome to this little snippet info video on weight gain in perimenopause and menopause. I am fresh from a run, which is why I look like I do um, after showering, and wanted to, Sheila and I had a bunch of ideas of ways to try to get uh, more information to everybody. I, I, I tried to put together a lot of the questions that I get from the phone calls and, and, and questions that people have when I see, when we see patients, what we wanted to start to do is put together some information that seems to come out over and over again as questions. And then actually what we thought would be great is we're going to do a question and answer webinar. And this way, if you can jump on, great, you can listen, you're going to send questions in advance if you have them, um, you can ask them live. And then if you can't be there, which is totally understandable, we're going to run at lunchtime, life is crazy. Um, we're going to send the video out to everybody. But we thought once a month, we would do a little bit of a topic that people seem to be very frustrated with, uh, bring some details to light, and then answer questions that come on about it. With holidays coming around especially, but but weight gain, unfortunately, in perimenopause is 40s, but I would even say kind of late 30s into 40s and then menopause late 40s into 50s uh, is, is a constant problem. And, and I seem to go over this a lot in each individual appointment because there seems to be a lot of frustration with it. And I thought doing a little video on what exactly happens where you can watch this in peace and quiet in your own time. Uh, it's not in a back-to-back -back appointment and it's not in a quick phone call, but really sit down, look at the slides, listen to a little bit of what happens, and then take a step back and look at your own, if you would, sort of lifestyle that is centered around these changes. I find myself a lot when talking to people when answering questions about why this weight gain, why this abdominal weight gain, where is this coming from, is everybody forgets you're getting older. And, and I think sometimes you have to start with that. The body changes when you get older. Actually, and I, there's three species, and I can't remember the third one, it's humans, the killer whale, and another kind of whale. Only those three species actually continue to live after childbearing is gone. So, so animals will have babies until they die. And, and once their baby ability goes away, they die. We as humans live further. And actually one of the reasons is something called the grandmother hypothesis. They found that grandmother type women, women in, in their menopausal years, when they take care of their children's children, those kids tend to do better. So we sort of evolved to keep us around a little longer for that. However, Mother Nature does know that we hunt and gather a little bit slower when we're older. So what will happen is we can't find food and shelter as easy. So let's go through just a couple of slides that will give you an idea about weight gain, how it happens very easily in your perimenopause and menopausal years, and a little bit of, of what you understand that you have to implement into your life to keep yourself fit and take it from somebody who lifts and is a, a pretty aggressive distance runner. Even then you get some body changes. Now hormones help and I'm going to explain why, but there still are some basic body changes that happen. Our hips widen, our, our top chest area widens, that even if we stay fit and even if we take hormones, we can prevent some of what happens. But the big picture is there are some slight changes. So we're gonna do everything we possibly can to stay in front of it. One of the big problems is that estrogen drops. And what's really interesting is everybody talks about aging and low testosterone. I need testosterone. Somebody put a testosterone pellet in me. That is actually not the problem. Your testosterone generally stays reasonable. So hyper means elevated. This is a study that was done in 2017. And the biggest reason why we get heavier is we get fast drops in estrogen, but our testosterones or androgens, which is kind of, the, they're the same, right? DHEA, testosterones, those are our male hormones, our androgens. 
they basically stay the same. So you will have estrogen and testosterone. Testosterone stays the same, estrogen drops, and your body, in a sense, thinks you're a guy. More tes uh, testosterone relative to estrogen tends to put fat on around the belly. So you get that menopot that we all complain about. Okay, three important facts. Perimenopause and menopause are associated with changes, quantitative amount of and morphological type of changes in, sorry, that should say fat, not fate, fat tissue. So you get this increased weight gain. The second thing that comes along with it, and I'm going to explain down the road, is you get insulin resistance. And what insulin resistance means is you can't get glucose into your muscle as easy, so it winds up going into your fat. The muscles resist the glucose, so therefore the insulin has to put it somewhere else. Menopausal transition, movement from perimenopause 40s into 50s is characterized again by a shift from mostly estrogen to more testosterone. And you'll get an increase in the amount of available testosterone. So not only is there more kind of clothing in the store that is shipped from the factory, but there's more in your closet, higher amounts of testosterone. And then what happens is women that actually have more bioavailable testosterone, the higher testosterone, those women will actually gain more weight. And a lot of women will ask me, well, why do pellets or testosterone pellets, oh, my friend feels amazing and she lost weight. So what happens with pellets is the average uncomplicated woman's testosterone level is about 21. That's a fact in LabCorp or Quest. When you push a pellet in somebody and you drive that testosterone to 200, now you will overwhelm every receptor in the brain, in the body, that it's time to go into heat. And at that point, you're high, the body feels amazing, and you don't want to eat. And that's why weight goes down. The body will adapt to it eventually. The highs will get less. The androgenic states will come back, your hair will grow thicker on your face, you may get some male pattern baldness on your head, you'll get more acne, you'll get a little bit more oily skin, you will start to see those things and your weight will, if not taken care of with estrogen and the appropriate diet and exercise that comes around with it, your weight will increase. Here's why it happens. Estrogen sits in the central nervous system to balance energy, and make you feel satiated with food. Number two, fat tissue is healthy. It is not inflamed. When you get older, you get more inflammatory cells that develop from older organs. Estrogen drops, the organs sense it, they release more inflammatory cells, they make their way into the fat. And when you put glucose in and create fat, you can't get it back out again. When you can't get fat, uh, sorry, glucose into the muscle, what happens is insulin levels increase and you push it into fat. So instead of a nice balance between insulin and glucose and your fat cells, everything pushes into fat and won't come back out again. Your muscle cells don't open up to glucose as well. So what happens again is that you increase glucose floating in the bloodstream the insulin increases and shoves it into fat. Your immune system becomes more dysregulated, more dysregulated and more inflammation creates more fat deposition. And in the light of higher testosterone, it will show up in your middle. And that's why you feel a middle that you've never had before. Quick study here they did with monkeys. And what they found is that here's where we talk about hormone improvement. Lack of estrogen in the old monkeys eating a typical American diet, which you have to evaluate your diet. If there are too many simple carbohydrates, not enough protein, not enough fat, not enough vegetables, and I don't care how busy your schedule is, if you don't have enough of that balance in there, what's going to happen is 
your sedentary, more sedentary system will pack it on pretty easy. So even if you feel like you walk a lot of steps, you're unless you're a construction worker or maybe, maybe, maybe even a landscaper where you're hauling heavy equipment and your heart rate's up and down all over the place. Most of us being busy running errands, it's not driving that heart rate. So that is still relatively sedentary behavior. So what they found with the monkeys is that lack of estrogen and they sat, they were better when estrogen was added. They moved more, they were more active. So that's where hormones come into play. Hormones will move you back in a better direction. You will feel better. You will get a little better insulin sensitivity. And I'll explain that as I finish up the talk here. But, but you have to do your part in exercise. Physical activity with aerobic and resistance. You gotta move and you gotta lift. And here's the real numbers, 150 to 300 minutes a week to, of moderate intensity or 75 to 150 of vigorous intensity in aerobics. So the way you figure out your max heart rate is 220 minus your age. Now, if you have not been exercising, I don't want you to calculate that and then go run or swim or say, oh, Ginsburg told me I got to go to my max heart rate and God forbid if something happened to you. I'm telling you, you got to move up to that. And if you feel like you're frustrated with weight and you're walking your dog or you're walking three miles four days a week, you need to wear some kind of heart rate monitor and see what your heart rate's doing. And realize if with your walking, your heart rate's living at about 115, 120, that's not enough. 220 minus your 50, say, year old age, right, for your max heart rate is going to take you to what's at 170 right? 220 minus 50 is 170. So I'm 58, 60 is 160. That's max heart rate. That's going to be your intense heart rate. Your middle level heart rate is going to be closer to say 135, 140. But notice if you're going to run it that way, you got to do 150 to 300 minutes. 300 minutes is a long time. And that doesn't include doing at least two days a week of strength. So you have to lift, you have to lift a little heavier because you have to rebuild muscle. You won't rebuild muscle without estrogen. So I can put the estrogen back in. I can give you your progesterone. We can make sure your testosterone is optimized, not driven up. That's why a lot of people, we don't give any testosterone. You have plenty, but then you got to move your body. And if you have something that hurts, then find an activity around it. If you can't run, then swim. A lot of people go, I don't like the water. You can aqua jog, you can run in the water, you try to run fast in the water, it's not going to hurt your knees and it's going to drive your heart rate up. You can do a spin class, you can get on a rowing machine, but you can do something, you can do water aerobics that is going to shake your body and upregulate your heart rate while you're lifting heavy. I do think yoga is a wonderful exercise, but it is not going to put enough muscle mass on you. So if you are doing yoga, you have to add something else to that. Take home here is that the hormonal changes across perimenopause contribute to abdominal obesity. So as you hit the perimenopause menopause, you are going to put more weight on in your belly. Estrogen therapy can help you bring that back. Nobody is going to recommend it. The FDA is not going to say, hey, take estrogen to lose weight. The studies haven't been done, and I don't know that they ever will because then Drug companies won't be able to sell all their weight loss drugs, but, but understand that you will get some revision of this negative change that can actually help you be more insulin sensitive. So you can get more of that glucose into the muscle so the muscle can grow and you can increase your resting metabolism. So the estrogen will support this, but you really have to, strong way, you really have to do this part of it significantly. One of the big things I think that'll really help you do that is journal it. I've been journaling my own um, new running. I'm trying to do a lot of low heart rate, high mileage. And the best way to do it is to journal it. So you write it down. And then at the end of the week, you go, oh, look, I ran 60 miles. Or you look at it and say, hey, I only went two days a week. So, so look at what you're doing and understand that this is significant. 
What I'm hoping is this will give you just a little bit of background, a little bit of understanding of how we put the whole big piece together. And Sheila and I are going to do a question and answer. Uh, and, and you'll see all that in, in what we send out in the uh, it, with this video. We're going to do a question and answer session lunchtime. And I hope that you guys all join us there and we can um, help you understand what you can do to maximize your health, keep yourself healthy and fit and lean and living long. So let's hope to see everybody there and send us your questions in advance. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.